since the ellipse lacks the supreme symmetry of the circle, it's not surprising, perhaps, that the equation for an ellipse is going to be a little bit more complicated and elaborate than it was for the circle. Let's take a look. So here is the standard form for the equation of an ellipse that's centered at the origin 0, 0. Well, there's two possibilities if you think about it. An ellipse is, could it be uh, oval shaped in this way, or the ellipse could be oval shaped in this way. Well, it turns out that if it's oval shaped in this way, then we say that the major axis is actually going to be uh, sort of along the x-axis. And so therefore, we write the expression with the, with the x squared term first. And so I have x squared over a constant a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. In the case when it's actually an ellipse that's sort of uh, on its side, at least, then we have that, that major axis being in sort of the y direction. And then we write the y first. And so I write y squared over that a squared plus x squared over b squared equals 1. This is the generic form. Notice that if, in fact, the a and the b were equal, so think of this as being a squared and think of this as being a squared, then if I were to multiply everything through by a squared, they would simplify off here. I'd get an a squared here, and I'd be looking at the equation of a circle of radius a. So in some sense, this is generalizing the idea of a circle because I'm allowing different values down here. The vertices, which are just sort of the, 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 the points that are furthest away from the very center and the points that are closest away, the furthest points away are going to be given by a0 and negative a0. And the, the foci, the points that we were just talking about, are going to be located at c0, negative c0. But wait, 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 what's c? I don't see c here. Well, good question. It turns out c is nothing more than a squared minus b squared. So that's the precise locus of those points. That's where you put the push pins, by the way, if you want to try the experiment we just saw. And the covertices, that's sort of what's going on in the, in the part of the ellipse that's closest to the, the center point is at 0b and 0, negative b. And then everything is switched around if, in fact, the, the, um, the ellipse is put on its side. OK, now there's a couple of other uh, characters I want to share with you. There's the major axis that I told you is that the longest, the longest part. And of course, that's going to actually be the length of the, the line segment between these two points, which, you can, which we can see to be just 2 times a, because I've gone negative a in this direction and a in that direction, so the total length is just 2a. And the minor axis is going to be given by 2b, which is the length of the line segment between these two points. Lots of stuff here. It looks sort of like very complicated, these things. Once you start seeing some examples, you'll see this is not so bad. It's not so bad, I promise you. Let's take a look at some examples together. So let's write the equation for this ellipse. So we're told it's an ellipse. And we're given that one focus is here at 3, 0. And now we want to see if we can actually figure out what the uh, equation is for this ellipse. Well, I can figure out. I can figure out the, the vertices, because the vertices are located right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's, the, that's one vertex. And so if I see that's 5, then that tells me what the denominator on x should be. You see, since the focus is on the x-axis, and I see that the, the ellipse is sort of bowed out, stretching along the x-axis, I see I'm going to be writing x first. So I've got the x squared divided by, well, this, this vertex length squared. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be 5 squared, or 25. Plus, and now I've got the y-axis, so I've got the y squared, divided by where it intersects the, the axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here I see that the co, that the co vertex is actually has um, length 4, and so I square that, and I get 16. And that equals 1. And you can see how that conforms with the formula we have here. We see the a is greater than or equal to b, 25 is greater than or equal to 16, and I've got x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. And the important thing to realize is that if you look at this, this tells me <clears throat> that I should be centered at the origin. The 25 means I go 5 units over in this direction and 5 units over in this direction, and the 16 tells me I go up 4 and I go down 4, and then I put in the oval there, which is the perfect ellipse. Let's try another example. How about this one? The ellipse having a vertex at 0, 7, 
and a covertex at 4, 0. Well, now notice that the vertex is along the y-axis. Let's take a look at a gra this, the graph of this. So I have 0, 7. That's way here. And 4, 0 is way out here. So you can see that this ellipse kind of must look something like this. And so the major axis is actually going to be along the y-axis. So I've got to write the y's first. That's the key thing. So I write y squared divided by the square of that, that length right there, which is going to be 7 squared, or 49. Plus, now I put the x squared, since that's sort of more modest. I see this length is 4, so I square it and get 16 equals 1. And that's the answer. So once we get into the rhythm of this, all of a sudden we will see that looking at ellipses is nothing more than looking at a circle that's just been pulled out a little bit.